Okay then guys, let's have a look at this uh, pass paper, uh, C2 pass paper OCR exam board for the May 2011 examination paper. It's 1 hour 30 long. Let's look at the question. Try and simulate what you would go through process-wise before or at the outset of a, an examination. It's a good idea to look at all the questions for starters. But let's just have a quick look at the instructions so that we're absolutely happy with everything. Um, we've got a answer book and question paper. Uh, question paper is found in the center of the printed answer book. Write your name, center number and candidate number and the space is provided on the printed answer book. Please write clearly and in capital letters. Write your answer to each question in the, in the space provided in the printed answer book. That's bold, emboldened, isn't it? So it's extremely important. Additional paper may be used if necessary, but you must clearly show your candidate number, centre number, and question numbers. Use black ink. Pencil may be used for graphs and diagrams only. Read each question carefully. Make sure you know what you have to do before starting your answer. Answer all the questions. Do not write on in the barcodes. You are permitted to use a scientific or graphical calculator in this paper. Give non-exact numerical answers correct to three significant figures unless a different degree of accuracy is specified in the question or is clearly appropriate. So that's the instructions, quite detailed but quite clear as well. Um, okay, brackets, marks are given on the right hand side, each part of the question. Clear presentation of your answers, total marks are 72, 12 pages in the answer book. Um, question paper contains four pages. Um, okay, so that's that then. So again, it's fairly clear. So let's have a little look through the paper. Now, the benefits of quickly looking through the paper at the outset of an examination is basically you can choose which questions you'd like to do first. It's always good to choose a nice, easy question and use a friendly one that you can get off to as best as possible start. And leave the ones that are long-winded, tedious, or you don't like trying or you're not so confident about, we'll leave them to the latter part of the examination. If you have time, then you can do those also. The other thing to say about looking through the paper and looking at the questions for a moment or two at the beginning of an exam is the fact that your brain works on things subconsciously, even when you're not aware of it. So when you've looked at the questions, your brain is probably already working out the solutions, even though you're working on a completely different problem. So that when you come to the question to do, it's not entirely unfamiliar. And your brain may already have done some of the preparatory work in order to find out the solution. So time is well spent by just having a quick overview of the paper. So let's just do, with that thought in mind then, let's just uh, have a look at these questions. So first one, nice use of friendly triangle question. Length, cosine and sine rule, area, half BC sine A there. Um, yeah, no surprises there. Nice use of friendly question for the first one. Question two is integration and easy powers and then separate the variables and integrate apply the initial conditions again one and two are nice three also is sectors and areas of circles we've got radius eight i've got an angle i told the total perimeter so it should be relatively easy the only thing i would remark here is that um circumference is two pi r and we know that formula so if ever you forget what the formula is for arc length, remember circumference is 2 pi r, and then it follows from that that a proportion of the circle is equal to not 2 pi, because that's the whole, but theta times r, so it's r theta. And by the same token, the area, area is um, pi r squared. Well, you can write that as 2 pi r squared over 2. So that's for the whole circle. So a proportion of the circle would be the proportion of the angle of 2 pi, wouldn't it? So the r squared over 2 would just be accompanied by theta instead of the 2 pi, wouldn't it? So again, you get half r squared theta. So those formulas follow from the standard formulas anyway, if ever you forget them. They're easy to discern from the formulas for whole circles. So that's a nice, easy question. So the first three are good. Uh, here, we've just got simple rearrangement to this. Integration, we're well, looking at it that way around, aren't we? Integral x dy's between 1 and 3, so that should be fairly easy as well. So that's good. Number 5. So everything's doable so far, it seems. Um, expansion of this, use the binomial theorem, binomial expansion. And we can just obtain the first four terms according to the formula. And read off the A, and then work out K, given B equals C, and then find D. So that's nice as well. 
Easy user-friendly question there as well. So number six, cubic polynomial, factor theorem, find a factor. If you look at this, if you put in one, one and two, um, plus 10 is 12, minus 11, so that's not going to be a factor. But if you put in two, eight and two, four is 12, plus 10 is 22, minus 22. So straight away you can see f of two, and x minus two is a factor. Do the division, get the quadratic that remains, and then solve that quadratic. And it implies here that we're probably going to need to use the formula, isn't it? Perhaps, unless we can factorize, but we can fall back on the formula here. So that's six. GPs and APs, nice easy questions they are. Always a good question to do and to favor, to think, well, I'll get that done straight away. So that shouldn't be any surprises in that one. Let's move on then. Uh, number eight now. Got a sketch. We've got y equals 2 to the x minus 3. Transformation. Uh, from there to there, 2x minus 3 is a translation. It's important to use the right words when you're describing these things. x and y coordinates. Simple properties are logs here. Like, for example, the 3 can come over to p with the y, y plus 3. And what happens to take a log is that the 2 drops down to be the base number. And then you're just left with x equals and look out for that uh, simple little process when we go to the solutions here to work out the solutions. Trapezium rule, long question but doable, just time consuming. So that one would be okay but time consuming. Nine, let's have a look at that. Got this cosine 2x, got the minimum here. You just need to worry about the period, the coordinates of the minimum. Solve this inequality so you draw a horizontal line at 0.5. And then we can work out what the solutions are. And solve this trick equation here. So all in all, a fairly user-friendly paper. Eight and nine are probably quite long-winded, so I would leave those to the end of the paper anyways. But I wouldn't have any objections, actually, to do it in the order in which the paper suggests it should be done. So all the best then, guys, if you've got a C2 paper in the near future. And hope you uh, do as well as you possibly can. The only thing I would say in conclusion is if you do finish the paper before the end of an examination, then don't leave the exam early, but just simply go through all the questions once more, double-checking everything you've done. And if you finish double-checking, then triple-check, so that you can squeeze out every last possible half-mark that's obtain attainable from this examination, so that you do as well as you possibly can. So as I say, all the best in the uh, NEC2 exams you've got in the near future, and hopefully I'll catch you again in another revision session. Cheers!